Dear students, till now, under the chapter Water Resources, we have covered so far the importance of water, the utility of water under the different sectors, and the two types of the sources of water, that is surface water and groundwater, and the utility of these sources of water under the various sectors. And since India is an agrarian economy, we need to have lot of water for the irrigation purposes. So now we'll be taking up that why the demand of irrigation is so high in India. The spatial distribution of rainfall is very uneven in the country. So when I say spatial, so that means all the areas do not receive the same amount of water. The second factor for the demand of irrigation is uneven temporal distribution of rainfall. Spatial means all the areas do not receive the same amount and temporal means because India receives the rainfall through the monsoons. So the time and amount of rainfall is not at all fixed. So we have to depend upon the irrigation. Another important factor for the demand of irrigation is that India has a growing period throughout the year. So India is lucky enough as far as the growing period is concerned because the temperature throughout the year in the plain area remains above the zero degree. So that means the whole year we can use for production of the crops. So when the whole year we are producing, we need to have water. The another factor is India is going for the production of the high yielding varieties of the various crops, whether they are the food crops or they are the cash crops. So these high yielding varieties of the crops need to have the sufficient amount of irrigation. Now we talk about the tubules and well irrigation. So tubules and wells, these are the two via medias through which we use the groundwater. So on the visuals, you can see this is a tubule irrigation. So tubule means when the water pumps out by the energy that is the tubule. You might have visited any of the villages around your area and you might have seen how the fields are being irrigated by the tubules. Now this visual shows you the irrigation being done by the wells. Though this visual is a very remote type of the means of irrigation because nowadays this is almost not in practice. This visual shows the lift irrigation through the wells. Though the water is coming from the well, which is a source of a groundwater, there is a depletion of groundwater resources and decline in the groundwater table. So groundwater table is the level till which we get the water. And there is an intensive irrigation in Punjab, Haryana and western Uttar Pradesh because these are the states where lot of agricultural practices are going on. Now we talk about the emerging water problems. The main problems of the water resources are, children you also might be knowing, that the availability of the water is the one, use of water is another, and the third is the quality of water we talk about, and the last is the management of water. So with the present trend of the water requirement and it is continuous wastage, so it is not only the use we also talk about the wastage of water. So if a trend goes on, the day is not far off when India will face the crucial shortage of water. So we have to use the water judiciously so that the water does not waste out and we are left with the certain resources of water. Water quality refers to the purity of water or the water without un wanted foreign substances. So water gets polluted by the foreign matters such as the microorganisms, the chemicals and the industrial wastes etc. which lead to the water pollution. Most of the rivers are carrying the polluted water and we have been dumping all the sorts of the waste matter into the rivers and the large scale pollution of the rivers is turning the water into the septic drains posing the serious threats 
to the health of the millions of people. It has been estimated that about three-fourths of the surface water in India is polluted. And pollution, you must be knowing, there are certain reasons for that. And the most important reason is the industrial waste which is entering into the water and polluting that. Another factor for the pollution of water is the indiscriminate use of chemical fertilizers. Because for the agricultural production, we are using the fertilizers in plenty. And it is not only the fertilizers, we also talk about the pesticides and the insecticides also, which we are using to have a better produce of the crop. Now we talk about the conservation of the water resources, which has become very important factor because we need to conserve water for the generations to come. So why do we need to conserve water? The question is, when we say that there is plenty of water on the planet Earth, then why do we talk about the conservation of water? The only reason is, the water which is most used in the country, that is the surface water. And the sources of surface water are very limited. If we don't conserve that, then the time is not far off children when we'll have to face the scarcity of water. So the reasons we are talking about, the one is the water is in short supply. Number two, the daily increasing demand of the water with the increasing population. Thirdly, the large scale pollution of the water. And fourthly, the uneven distribution in time and space as well. So these are the reasons that we need to conserve water. The idea must be coming to you that when we talk about the conservation of water, then you must be thinking that what steps should we adopt to conserve the water. Number one, developing the water saving technologies and methods. Number two, preventing the pollution of water. Number three, encouraging watershed development and rainwater harvesting, water recycling and the reuse of water. So children will be taking up the two important aspects of the water conservation, that is the watershed management and the rainwater harvesting. Now what is watershed management? Watershed development is a very important device to conserve water resources, to increase the agricultural production and to stop the ecological degradation. So what is degradation, children? You might be knowing that when the quality deteriorates, whether that is of the air, water or soil, that is known as degradation. Another thing, the central government, the state government and the non-government organizations are working on the watershed development programs so that we can conserve water for the generations to come. The one most important project sponsored by the central government is Hariali. Secondly, we talk about what are the important aspects of that. This Hariali project, the primary aim of that is to help the rural people in conserving the water for drinking purposes, for irrigation purposes, for fisheries, and as well as for afforestation. So what is afforestation? You might be knowing that afforestation is a concept where we go for planting more trees. Now, I'll be telling you about few state government projects of the watershed management. One is, known as Miru Miru, that is water and you, in Andhra Pradesh, and Arwari Pani Sansad in the district of Alwar, and the state is Rajasthan, where these two projects are really working to conserve the water and help the people to know the importance of water. Under these two programs, the various steps have been taken up to harvest water for the benefit of a common man. Several structures like the percolation tanks, dugout ponds, which in the local language you might be knowing, they are being known as the Joherds. The check dams, they have already been constructed 
for the water harvesting in these two states. Now on the screens, you can see a picture of the tanks that how we store the water and this water is being utilized in the form of the conservation of water. This is another visual where you can see the earthen pot where the water from the hut top is entering into the earthen pot and where we are conserving the water. This is an important aspect for you to know that one southern state of the country, that is Tamil Nadu, where the state government has made it mandatory to every house to have the water harvesting structures in the houses. So this is surely going to help to have the recycling and the reuse of the rainwater. Now the another concept is the rainwater harvesting. The large scale depletion of the groundwater is a very serious problem. So this is a technique of increasing the recharge of the groundwater by capturing and storing the rainwater locally to meet the household needs. Because we have already discussed that the groundwater is nothing else but the rainwater which percolates through the ground, through the pores, through the type of the rocks we have in the certain areas. In the rural areas, there is a shortage of water for irrigation purposes. And when we talk about the urban areas, there is a shortage of water both for the domestic and the industrial purposes. Now, we talk about the various objectives of the rainwater harvesting. To meet the ever increasing demand of water, reduce the runoff which chokes the drains, the groundwater storage to help raise the water table, reduce the groundwater pollution, reduce the soil erosion, avoid the flooding of the roads. Besides all these objectives, this rainwater harvesting is surely going to supplement the domestic water requirements during the summer drought season. Now we talk about the low cost technique of the rainwater harvesting. There are the different techniques which are involved under that. One is the roof water harvesting. Number two, the recharge of the hand pumps. Number three, the recharge through the abundant dug wells. And number four, the recharge through the trenches and buns. So children, on your screens, you can see this is a collection of the roof water in the tanks through which we can have the rainwater harvesting. This is another visual which shows the rainwater harvesting and the water getting into the percolated tanks and the water recharges the ground level which helps to increase the water table level of the underground water. On your screens, you can have a visual of another rainwater harvesting system. So all these systems you might have seen, there are some common factors of storing and conserving water, whether it's the rooftop water or the water coming through the pumps or through the percolation pits. So children, under this chapter, we have covered that why do we need the irrigation? What are the factors which are essential to have the irrigation in the country? Besides that, we have discussed about the quality of water and we have also discussed about the two important techniques of conserving water. One is the watershed management and the another is the rainwater harvesting. So children, think about that why the water is considered as a life. Why the life is not possible without water? Why the earth is the only planet in the solar system which has a life. Thank you.